All right, hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mack, play fast football. Uh, the last video we did was uh, installing a middle school defense done with uh, my buddy and mine, Jeff Whitaker, the owner of Dome Hats, who is now a head uh, middle school coach, and he wanted some suggestions on defense, and there were so many interactions on that video and so many great comments and discussions on that video that uh, somebody actually asked if we could do the same one on the offensive side of the ball. So because there was so much interest in the comment section and just, uh, you know, a lot of great interaction between uh, different coaches. I figured we would do the same thing, and I'll tell you exactly what I told uh, Jeff Whitaker what I would think about doing if it was my program. Make sure you check out some of our partners, GameStrat, Sideline Replay Company. We use, use them for the last five or six years now, the last two schools I've been at. If you're looking for highly reliable, highly affordable, make sure you check out GameStrat, Dome Hats, Headwear Company. We use, I've used them at every school I've ever been at the last 15 or 16 years. Uh, completely customizable. You design a hat, they can design one for you. Snapback fitted, Velcro, all right, anything you want. All right, you do it your way, uh, your logo, your colors, different styles of hats. They really do a great job, uh, you know, presenting some cool swag and merchandise for new companies, startup companies, bigger companies, teams. They get it. They played. They're now coaching. They understand the world we live in. Stock hats suck. Check out Dome. Baker Sporting Goods Company we use for our uh, practice gear, uh, our coaches gear for practice, our coaches gear on the sideline Friday night, our uniforms are distributed from them. Um, you know, they, they do everything from coaches, fans, players, you can get it all in one convenient setup. So make sure you check out what Baker Sports has going on. Difference USA, the ultimate striking machine, you get thousands of reps without needing a partner, just you and the ultimate striking machine. They set up on your current racks in the weight room, no need to have a partner holding a bag, teach resistance on a hand shield or a dummy. It's just you and the ultimate striking machine. If you want to strike violently, you better practice striking violently. Aaron Consulting, Dan and his group, doing a great job getting information out there. Uh, things like the NCAA timeline, things like uh, important NCAA dates, things like building your college contacts. Uh, you know, he does Zoom meetings and, and different little clinics, virtual clinics, where he is trying to educate families, keep the coach at the forefront of what's going on. He's always got some interesting takes on Twitter in the portal world, in the recruiting world. And now I saw one today, a great comment about camps and, you know, and, and you know, at what colleges are doing with their camps. And a lot of the recruiting can still occur on campus with the high school coach, you know, seeing a kid in that setting, talking to teachers and, and administrators. So that's still the avenue that recruiting is going to go down. He does a great job helping families, educating families, keeping the coach at the forefront of recruiting. So make sure you check them out. G-E-T-A-R-E-N.com. Go to Get Aaron and check out what they've got going on. Brand Tech, company out of Wisconsin, kind of the Swiss Army knife, I'd like to call them. They've got everything from, uh, you know, recovery drinks, their recovery drink fizz. They've got a fundraising platform called Change Up. They've got a, the Q-collar that they distribute. They've got Sports Fresh, Sports Fresh which is a disinfecting spray, a, a microbial that can take care of uh, trying to help eliminate staph infection. You can use it in a weight room, locker room. You can use it on uniforms. Um, you know, they also do custom sublimation. They are making me some custom play fast stuff, a pair of sneakers that I cannot wait to rock on one of these videos. They're absolutely awesome. So uh, if you're in the Wisconsin area or, uh, you know, the Midwest area, make sure you check out everything Brand Tech has going on. Fly route drones. Uh, we use drones at our practices, 7 on 7, everything we do here at Bishop Kenny. Love the angle of the, of, of the drone. The eye in the sky doesn't lie. It's, for us, it's easier to set up than the end zone camera. We can kind of change where it is and the location of it, whereas the end zone camera kind of has to sit in one spot no matter what. So uh, if you're looking for that angle, make sure you check out Fly Route Drones. All right, if you go to their website, flyroute.com, use the promo code PLAYFAST, you will get 20% off of a certification class. That's right, they will teach you how to fly a drone to be legal take you through the certification. You can have a coach do it, a manager do it, whoever you think is going to fly your drones. So if you want that certification, if you want to be educated on how to fly a drone, if you want to purchase a drone, make sure you check out Fly Route. Sting8740 gmail.com. Email me. I just sent out a defensive bundle with some of our tight split Blitz Families 3-3 uh, three, three stack webinar I did. So uh, if you're interested in any of the virtual clinics, anything we've done on my site that's private, not public, email me and we'll figure out what we can do to get it to you guys. So, you know, with the success of the video the other day and a lot of people interacting with it, 
I also kind of gave Jeff my opinion on what I would do on offense. And first thing I would do is I would live out of 20, 11 personnel sets. All right. And the reason for that is it's going to give me all of my lead isolation runs that I want. All right. It's going to give me the ability to have a two receiver side to put somebody out in the slot. All right. To get the ball out there, depending on if they can or cannot cover down. It's going to give me the ability to get three receivers out to a side, right? So uh, when I talk a little bit about the passing game, it's going to give me the ability to get three receivers out to a side. So I would start off in this set, okay, and I would be a huge tempo proponent at that level, and here's the reason why. Those games are so quick, the quarters are so short, that if you want kids to have fun and you want kids to enjoy football, especially on the offensive side of the ball, you're going to have to maximize your opportunities. Um, you know, you go to a lot of those games, and in the first half, a team may only get the ball one or two times, especially if the other team is running the ball every down and you can't stop it. So not only from a competitive standpoint or a philosophy standpoint of what I believe in, I would be running a, an up-tempo system with simple communication rules simply because with the quarters being that short, I want to maximize the amount of plays we get, right? Why practice all week to run? 10 offensive plays. The kids need to have fun. We need to get some things taught. All right, so I want to make sure I can maximize all that. So I would really be emphasizing tempo, right? Now, I'm not saying that, you know, formationally, you can be as different as you want. My suggestion was this is where we start. This is bread and butter. This is what we do, right? And then, you know, from the runs I talked to them about, I told them that I would go power, I would go counter, all right, and then I would go buck sweep for my perimeter run. All right now again, all opinionated, right? This is just things that I would do. And I'm going to give you my explanation of why I would do them, right? So I'm not just going to throw them out there and say, hey, this is the system. you got to buy into it. This is what you got to run. Here's why I would do those things. By running gap schemes, we're going to be able to teach linemen up front how to down block, double teams, back blocks, how to pull and kick and where your helmet should be and what your, your angle should be into the line of scrimmage on a kick out block and then how to skip, pull, and wrap, all right, up to isolate a linebacker or when you are the second player through, all right. So we're going to get teaching guys how to pull and be the first player to kick, teaching guys how to pull second player and wrap, all right. I think at that level, for a lot of your linemen, might be smaller, tougher kids, right. If you have a bunch of big guys that can't run and you don't think you can pull at that level, then obviously you're going to choose a different scheme. From a lot of the junior high football I've seen, there's a lot of linemen that really aren't that big, they're just tougher, old school maybe, you know, wing T guards, kids like that, that can pull, so why not teach pulling at that level? Again, if you don't think your kids can pull, then obviously you don't do it, right? Every, every roster has to run things that are conducive to them. But to me, by running gaps, all right, we can get, you know, things taught that kids are going to need to learn. So down blocks, double teams, right? So linemen getting footwork, hand placement, Helmet placement, working on all the things that they need to do, double teams, how to get hip to hip and combine, you know, and, and talk about movement, talking about coming off a double team to a linebacker, working on back blocks, all right, for a puller, uh, working on maybe hinging a, a backside B gap in a pull scheme. All things that they're going to need to learn for the next level, right? So we want to teach the game. We give ourselves some downhill runs, we give ourselves some misdirection, and then we give ourselves a chance to get the ball out on the perimeter, right? So those are my first three suggestions. That doesn't have to be all you do. That doesn't have to be what you do. That's just the world I would live in first. I would be trying to teach those things. It's going to give us a chance to take that kind of hybrid tight end old lineman, full back body, and we're going to get him to kick out, right? If we run GH counter, now we can get him to learn to wrap up an ISO on a backer so he can be taught kick blocks, he can be taught ISO blocks, and then he can be taught how to seal so that eventually if he becomes a body that's a tight end, he can get used to doing some of the things that he needs to do so he can be taught to seal on buck sweep. Okay, so that, that is what I would hang my hat on in the run game. I, those are the things that I would try and get done. And then, excuse me, if you want to build into that formationally some other deals where you feel like you can run those same plays, that's fine. I'm talking about where we would hang our hat, what I would do, all right, and again, especially for a first-year coach, the thing that I had mentioned to Jeff was, if I'm a first-year coach, I'm going to make sure that we can get lined up. I'm going to make sure that we can communicate without it looking like a complete disaster. And I'm going to make sure that we can execute some plays, and I would like to execute them at a high tempo because I want the people that might be evaluating that first-year job to come and say, hey, 
this guy's got an idea of what he's doing. Might not have all the pieces right now, might not have a ton of success right now, but when I go to a game, those kids can get lined up. The communication is simple. They don't have 10 on the field, 12 on the field, 18 on the field. All right, they've got 11 guys that are ready to rip, and it looks to me like they are achieving things. They are teaching the game to kids, right? That's why I would suggest that, right? Power counter, buck, simple, gap schemes, get you everything you want. Maybe it doesn't have all the answers in your game plan, but I'll talk to you a little bit about that later, like, like gadgets and wrinkles. You can do whatever you want. This is just the foundation of what I would do. All right, in the passing game, I would definitely be working quick game stuff, right? So whether you're a component of stick or if you're a quick game guy the way we used to be, our quick game was, you know, paired with hitches on the front side, slants on the back side, and, and, and stick out on, a, on one side with fade out or fade, you know, on the other side. Um, combinations that gave the quarterback a chance to look at one high, two high, leverage of the depth of the corners, make a decision off that. That's the way we used to run quick game. Our quick game was never mirrored. Right, but if you're a stick guy or if you're an old, you know, an area guy, whatever, whatever your version of quick game is, I would carry that because I think we have enough quarterbacks at that level that can certainly punch one, get a ball out. Protection's going to be a little bit of an issue, so I don't know how long I'd want to sit in the pocket, right? So punch one, get the ball out. Gets these kids on the perimeter involved, gets them a chance to get the football, right? So I would definitely be working on quick game stuff. All right, I would definitely be trying to teach them what now or access throws were, right? So if you face somebody that won't cover down and your kid can see that, you're teaching them how to rip a ball out to an uncovered player, okay? So I would definitely be teaching them now stuff, access stuff. I would 100% be working on sprint out, okay, for a couple reasons. Number one, it could become a design run for the quarterback if nothing's there. Number two, protection from drop back is probably going to be an issue, so let's move the pocket. All right, number three, it may cut the field in half, but I don't think a lot of middle school quarterbacks are going to be full field progressing anyways. So we can teach them how to read things. So if you sprint out to flood, all right, you can teach them how to read high-low. You can teach them how to make progressions, but you're making them on half the field, one to two to three, you know, or, or deep to medium to short, or however you want to read it, that's up to you. So it's not like you're taking that out of the quarterback's hands, right? You are allowing him to throw the ball, you're allowing him to read coverages, you're allowing him to make decisions, but you're just doing it on the move, number one, to protect him, number two, to build in another play that can be a perimeter run, right, and, and number three, to make it a little bit easier on your lineman. So when we do that, like when you sprint out now, if you had the back on, the, if the tailback, let's say, was on the same side, you can now sprint out and get three receivers into the route for any combination you want. You've got the tailback to be a lead blocker, whether you decide to reach it and waterfall it, if that's too expensive at that level, or you just down block it and put a guy on the edge, whatever you decide to do. If you want to make it a two-man route and make sure the quarterback's on his feet and upright, you could leave both backs in to protect, right? So I would certainly be sprinting out, all right? So it would be quick game, now access, sprint out, and then I would try and teach some version of a screenplay, okay? Why? Because I think you're going to need it. I think it's hard to defend at, at every level, especially at the middle school level. Can we get the kids out in front? I don't know. That's something you're going to have to experiment with, right? I don't have a ton of um, you know, experience with full installing things and calling them. You know, I work with a lot of incoming ninth graders, right, that are only one year removed from that level, and we throw a ton of screens on JV. Sometimes it's a cheap and easy way, like, you know, a lot of times when you're good at screens, even if those linemen never get to where they're supposed to get to, just the bodies in space and the receiver coming back under and, you know, uh, defensive players not being able to drop with their eyes where they belong. Screens become a cheap and easy way to move the football. They help keep the quarterback on his feet. They help the quarterback complete passes and get some confidence, right? So if it was me, I would be focusing on quick game, now access, sprint out, and trying to carry at least one screen, right? So what you're trying to do for me, it's about teaching something that we can run. I want to be organized. I want to run as many plays as possible because with eight-minute quarters, I feel like it is, you know, um, really short to begin with. And then with a lot of people throwing, the, uh, not really throwing the ball a ton, running the ball, the other team gets the ball and goes 10 plays down the field. When you get the ball, there's only two minutes left in the quarter, right? So if we want the kids to have fun, we want them to experience what football's like, especially on the offensive side of the ball. We need to be ripping the tempo. We need practice to move especially at that level and the high school level. Attention spans are kind of crazy. 
We need kids involved. We need things moving. We need to keep it interesting. We need to keep it fun, right? So this is just kind of the core of what I think I would be doing at that level, all right? Again, we had a lot of people on a poll question that I asked, you know, on the defensive side when we did a video and guys were saying, well, you need to run what the high school runs. If you are in a program that is a direct feeder to a high school and that high school coach and staff is involved with your program, then by all means, you run what they run. I would never argue with that. But in my experience, even in the state of Florida, where I've been in Northeast Florida for the last 25 years of my coaching life, 22 of them as a head football coach, there aren't many true feeders left. There's a couple small town atmospheres here and there, but in a lot of our larger counties, with school of choice now out there, there aren't a lot of true feeders left. So I don't know if you get that situation. So what I think you need to be focusing on, all right, and in Jeff's situation where he is coaching at, he's got kids that might go to six different high schools. There's four different public schools they can go to, and then there's private schools that they might be able to go to. All right, so when you're working at a place that doesn't have a direct feeder, it's about teaching game, techniques, fundamentals. That's a simple formation. We can teach who's eligible. We can teach how many people are off the ball, how many people are on the ball. We can have lead isolation runs. We can teach linemen about splits, stances, smart splits, double teams, down blocks, you know, footwork, hand placement. Pull and kick, pull and wrap, where my helmet should be on a kick out, right? So we can get down to the nitty gritty of football's blocking and tackling, right? Well, then let's teach those things, all right? We can teach a center how to snap in a shotgun because he's probably going to have to do it if he wants to play that position in high school because, you know, a large percentage of people snap the ball in the shotgun. Quarterback can get used to taking snaps. We can teach him quick game mechanics. We can teach him sprint out mechanics. We can teach him ball handling mesh mechanics, right? We can teach receivers how to stalk block and how to run routes. So we can break it down to the most simplistic techniques and fundamentals while having a structure that is downhill, all right? Try and avoid loss of yardage as much as possible. Let's get it gapped out, let's get downhill. We can build some misdirection in off a of counter, right? Buck sweep, we can get the ball to the burner. We can throw some quick game stuff that we feel like we can complete. Quarterback is upright, get rid of the ball because protection's an issue. Nows and accesses teach receivers out wide that we're trying to get you the ball, we want to get you the ball. Teach a quarterback how to make those decisions based on the looks that he sees. Sprint out, keep the quarterback moving, make protection easier for the O-line. All right, make it an extended run play if you need to. Still teach the quarterback to read things. All right, high to low, east to west, however you want to look at it. He still has to make some reads. You can get two-man, three-man combinations there. Okay, you can sprint out to the single if you wanted to. If you've got a matchup and coverage that you love, you could sprint out to the single and isolate the single. Right, so I think sprint out is a better option than drop back. And I would certainly be trying to gauge the parameters or test the waters of can we run screens? Can we get linemen out in front? Can we understand the timing, the spacing, where they need to be? If not, then you scrap it. Now, on top of that, where I think it gets fun, okay, where I think it gets fun is at that level, by all means, carry gadgets, wrinkles, right? By gadgets, I mean carry your trick plays, have some fun, right? Have the ability to take some shots, double passes, whatever it may be. All, right. All too often at that level, it, it, you know, a lot of times, it, if it's not taught correctly, it becomes toss the ball to your fastest player. Well, if that's the best you got and it's successful, then by all means do it. All right, bring your fastest player in motion and hand them off a jet sweep. By all means, that's fine. That's not a bad way to play football if it's successful. But if we want to get things taught, I think this gives everybody a chance. The only thing that, that I would say we're missing here is because of the quick game and the sprint out, maybe we're not developing kids that understand how to kick slide and pass set and the demeanor of kick sliding and pass setting. But I'm trying to keep the quarterback in mind to where I can teach the linemen rules of not going downfield. I can teach them how to full slide in protection. All right, I can teach the backs where they need to be in protection. We won't get half slide drop back probably at most middle schools, so that's the one thing they may miss out. But the linemen are getting everything they need. Receivers are going to get what they need. We're going to work on the pace. We're going to work on communication. We're going to work on operating procedure, what it's like to figure out where the ball's spotted. All right, how fast can we get to the next formation? How fast can we look to get communication from the sideline? Right, so we're breaking it down to techniques, fundamentals, operating procedures, teaching the game trying to block people, trying to be physical in the run game. I think that is a great way to start with what you want to do on offense. Now, here's the best thing about it. Whatever middle school you're at, do what you want. I'm not coaching middle school football, and I'm not coaching offense. 
I've got my own issues at my level and my own issues on my side of the ball. But when asked for advice or asked for my opinion from things that I've seen over 20, 30 years, I just see too many things that are multi-formational without a bread and butter, without a core, too many runs that are just kind of flip here, hand here, no blocking schemes, right? Not teaching kids how to block fronts, where the down blocks occur, right? And then those kids end up struggling early in their JV career. Okay, so the, the defensive one, awesome interaction. Guys are great. The comments are great. Offensive one, hopefully it's just as good for you guys uh, with, you know, with figuring out whether that's something you can do or, or you guys coming in and saying, hey, coach, I'm at a middle school. Here's what we do. Absolutely love all of it. I don't take offense to anything. If you say, coach, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I coach middle school and we run wing T. All four, all right? I'm not here to tell you what you should do. I'm here to tell you what my advice would be. And I'm here to give you a little bit of a, a you know, testimonial to why I would do that. I'm here to give you, you know, a little bit more documentation. I'm not just doing that because that's my system and that's what I love. I'm doing that and I laid out all the reasons of why I would do that at the middle school level. All right, so I appreciate all you guys. Remember, uh, click that subscribe button, turn your notifications on. You know, every time we do a video, we jump on YouTube live. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Leave a comment. The last uh, video, there was... 15, 16 different comments on the middle school defensive video. So always appreciate you guys uh, commenting. Be on the lookout. I think we're going to get the uh, Playfest clinic in 2025 up and running again. We're in talks right now to kind of get that figured out. A lot of people are saying that they want to do it. I would like to do it if I can find a time and get it going again. Just have to find the motivation to do it. And then uh, if you're in the Northeast Florida area, or at least the Jacksonville area, stay tuned. I think I'm going to do some camps this summer. Um, I, I had some players at, at um, school here and, and asking about camps and I really couldn't think of a great place to send them. I really couldn't think of where to go. Um, you know, your college camps, your one-day camps aren't the greatest ball camps. So um, I feel like there's a, a, a lot of coaches that I know in Northeast Florida, the guys that I respect at other high schools that I think I could bring in and have them help me put on a really good clinic, positional clinic, quarterbacks, receivers, DBs, linebackers, maybe get some O-line, D-line work going, do it by position. So uh, play fast clinics are, are going to be coming out as well. So as always, guys, support all of our partners. They take care of us. Make sure you take care of them. Appreciate everything you do for me. Appreciate everything you do for play fast. School year is almost done. We're almost there. Spring football starts for us in a week and a half. So right where we need to be. The draft is next week. Masters was last week. This is the window. This is the best time of year. Remember, you won't play well until you play fast. See you guys next time.